Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today, I want to go over oiling your handy quilter with you. Now, a couple of things that we're going to do, I'm going to show you what I do every week or every other week if I'm not quilting a whole lot. Also, I'm going to show you what I do every morning, and then I'm going to show you what I do at number one, every bobbin change, if you choose to do it every bobbin change, or many people will do it every three or four bobbins rather than every bobbin change. So let's head over to the machine and let me show you a few tips. Okay, the first thing I've done is I've turned the power off on the machine just for safety's sake, and we can turn that back on when we go ahead and we want to start running our oil through. The second thing I've done is I put on my X axis channel lock as well as my Y axis channel lock on the machine so that that way my machine is nice and stable and it won't move. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and if I do have thread in the machine, I'm going to take the thread out of the take up lever and just kind of take it and flop it over so that that way when we're running the machine, it's not going to get in the way and I'm not going to have any type of thread mess. The next thing that I'm going to do for my big oiling that I do every once or two times um, a month is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take the screws out of my needle plate. When I do a main oil, I want to really get in there and check things out. And I'm going to keep a magnetic dish. If you don't have a magnetic dish, just make sure that you put all of your little parts on the table so that that way they don't get lost. Now I'm going to go ahead, remove my needle plate, set that aside, and now I'm going to bring you in here so that you can see what we have going on inside. Before I started this process, I went ahead and removed my bobbin and bobbin case. And what I want you to see is on this hook assembly where you pop in your bobbin and bobbin case, you'll notice that you have one moving part, which is your hook. and that goes around and picks up your thread and then you have the stable part which is the center where you actually pop in your bobbin case on the inside and that stays stable and doesn't rotate. And so what we're actually trying to do when we're oiling the hook of our machine is we're trying to get the oil between those two moving parts. I would like to note at this point that we're actually doing this on a forte and the same would apply for an Amara, the Handy Quilter Forte, and the Handy Quilter Amara. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use canned air. Now, most of the machines would tell you do not use canned air. The difference is on these two machines you would because you actually have a sensor that's right in here that we don't want to use a brush on. So I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to go ahead and blow that out. Now, right in here where the basket is, where we put our bobbin case, what can happen over time if you don't regularly check or clean this is that it will develop a felt, um, like a felt mat around the whole bobbin case, just from the lint and the batting and the thread puke. And so if I notice that I'm starting to get a buildup of any felt in there, then while I'm doing this, I will rotate the back wheel just to make sure that that gets cleaned out properly. We always want to make sure as well that when we do rotate that wheel, it's going to go counterclockwise. Now that I've done that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to grab my oil and I'm going to put some right on the top of that basket, right where that notch is. Right there. So that way, when I do rotate the wheel, you're going to notice that that's going to take that oil right around where it needs to go. For a daily oiling, I'm going to go ahead, go in here. Again, this is for the Forte as well as the Amara. 
I'm going to go ahead and use my canned air, and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to spray out any dust or lint. And again, we have our light up here, and that's why we wouldn't want to use a brush. Now, if you have some of the older machines or a different brand, you would actually go ahead and use a brush and go up in there. But we can't use a brush on the Forte or the Amara because of the light that's there. So now that I have that brushed out, what I'm going to do is take my oil. And now I'm going to do this a little different than how some people do it. What I like to do, instead of putting it just on the lip, which I'm going to do as well, I want to go back here to this moving silver part back there. And notice here you've got a groove right there. You can kind of see how that groove is there. Let me turn this wheel so you can see that moving part back there. I'll turn it and get it into a position like that. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go in with my oil. And I'm going to put some oil right there. And what's happening is that's going right down in between that area where you actually want the oil to go. And then I'm going to wait and bring my lip around. Now the other place that people suggest to oil is right on the lip here. Now remember, when I say the lip, I don't mean up in the bobbin case. If you're oiling here, all you're doing is oiling your thread. You go down to the moving part where that lip is right here. It's like a little ledge, and you can put a few drops there. But for me personally, I do prefer this back part right there. I find that I get more bang for my buck with my oil when I go and I oil inside there. And then, of course, I'm going to go ahead and give that a couple turns. Now that I have my oil in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn on my machine. And I like to put it on manual on one of the slower speeds, almost the slowest it'll go. And what I like to do in the morning when I do my oiling is I'll let this run for about two minutes or so just to kind of work that oil through. And the next thing I do every time I do any oiling, whether it's the main oiling that I showed earlier or this oiling that I do daily, or if I'm doing in between bobbins, I'm going to make sure to take a nice swab and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to swab out any of that excess oil all the way around the inside of that basket. And then also down here, right just on that ledge, just a little bit, sop up any of the excess because that's where the excess is going to rest and we don't want to get that on our thread. And then once I do that and I head over to quilt, I will run my machine for about 12 inches and that's all I've found that it really needs off on the side to get rid of any oily thread that might be on there from the residue from inside our basket. Now once we've gotten this oiled for our main oil, our high maintenance oil, we're going to go ahead, we're going to flip this around and there's always going to be a bunch of thread puke and junk on the back of the needle plate. We want to make sure to get that off. And also make sure that you get the countersink holes facing up. So you want the little valleys in there. We're going to put that in. The other thing, by the way, that I want to mention is here in your needle hole, you want to check for burrs. You want to give that a good looky-see, make sure you don't have any burrs uh, where the needle has hit that uh, from the needle deflection when you're quilting. And if you do, then you would use, that's where you would use your emery cord to deburr your needle hole. So we're going to put that back in. We're going to line that up and we're going to go ahead, put our screws back in. And then we're going to move into talking about how I would do a daily oiling. A little tip for this, make sure that when you're putting your two screws in that you don't tighten one and then go to the other. You just want to put it in almost all the way, um, not even so it's snug, so it's in. And then go ahead and do your other and that's when you're going to snug them up. 
Now go ahead and get them nice and snug. So I'm quilting away. My bobbin just ran out. It's time to change the bobbin. I go ahead, pull out my bobbin case. Now that's something that I want you to notice. Whenever you remove your bobbin case, that is the only time that you're going to go ahead and use this little finger. That is to remove a bobbin case. That is never to put one in. When you put one in, you line it up and you always wait for the audible snap. And then go ahead, pull that out. You're going to grab for the Forte and the Amara. You're going to grab your Candair. You're going to give it a little spray. And then that's when you're going to grab your oil. And you're going to go right into that lip that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to find my lip. Get that down there. And that's where you're going to go right in there. And you're going to put just a couple little drops of oil. And that's for you during the day when you're quilting in between bobbin changes. And then you might let that run for just a few seconds. Stop it. And don't forget to take your thread out of your take-up lever at the top so you don't have thread bobbin up and down. And once you've done that, then you're going to go in and you're going to go ahead and swab out any extra oil that's in there. And again, before you would start quilting on a quilt, you would go ahead and run about 12 inches of thread out by sewing on the side, the batting, that extra batting and and um, backing that we have. And that's going to clean out any oil thread before you get started over on the actual quilt. Well, there you have it. Some ways to keep your hook assembly and your race maintained well and oiled properly. Now, the one thing to remember with the handy quilters, it's good to get in on an annual basis into your handy quilter dealer and have them do a good grease and oil on the machine. The other thing that I would say is remember with the Amara and the Forte in the handy quilter machines, you always want to use canned air and not a brush. Now with the other machines out there, you want to do that just opposite. You want to use a brush rather than the canned air. So I hope you enjoy, and if you like this video, go ahead and hit subscribe and like down below, and we will see you down the road. Take care of yourself and your machines. Mm -hmm.